Hi and welcome to another video from Code Review IO. In this video, we will going to talk about data caching in uh, both Flutter and React Native. Let's define first what it is data caching. It's a practice of temporarily storing copies of frequently accessed or computed data in faster and more accessible locations, such as memory or disk, to improve performance and reduce the need to retrieve the data from its from its original source again. This technique is commonly used to enhance the speed and efficiency of applications, especially when dealing with the data that doesn't change frequently or it's expensive to fetch. Now you have a couple types of uh, data caching. The first one is called web con uh, content caching, the API response caching, database query caching, and file caching, and the same for computation caching. Web content caching, where we need to store like web pages, images, style sheets, and web uh, on other web assets like uh, client side browser or server side proxy server to reduce the page load times and uh, and and the server loads. And data qu query caching is storing the result of frequently executed database queries. Uh, we are talking about in the using repeatedly the querying of database for the same data. API response caching is it's used to reduce the latency of fetching data from external source. The file caching though is a storing file in the cache to avoid repeated input output operations such as reading and writing to the disk. Computation uh, caching storing the result of computationally intensive operations such as mathematical calculations or complex transformations to avoid recalculating the same and here it can be used mostly in the data science there are always the pros and cons for every uh, technology or every techniques that we are using so if we, we are talking about the pros first we have improved performance have the ability to reduce the need of fetching data or slow remote slow or remote sources leading to faster data retrieval or improved application responsiveness. Uh, for reduced latency, the cache data can be accessed more quickly than data retrieved from the original source. Bandwidth saving caching reduces the amount of data transformed over the network, saving bandwidth and potentially lowering costs. And then uh, less load on servers. This is important when we need to um, offload the demand from the data source like for example the, the data database or apis and that will help us to prevent overloading servers during the traffic spikes and we have enhanced user experience which can be uh, together with uh, faster data uh, access to reduced waiting time to contribute a better user experience now for the cons though uh, is like we have uh, the cache invalidation which is a uh, ability that um, ensuring that the cache data remains up to date. So uh, this is, could be a cons uh, because you need always to be uh, up to date to update your cache data to be up to date with the accurate or the original one. The expiry uh, is used when determining the, the refresh cache data to prevent users from accessing outdated information. Consistency is maintaining the, between the cache data and the source data can be challenging, particularly in distributed systems. And the cache management is mainly uh, when managing ca cache size, memory usage, and also evacuation policies uh, to ensure optimal performance and efficient resource utilization. Now, n the next thing we will talk about some the differences that uh, use for, uh, for example, and when it comes to React Native and Flutter, uh, there are a couple uh, packages or libraries that could be used which is the most popular one uh, with the most stars that in GitHub. So we have a React Native async storage, is, which is uh, the, main, uh, the main one from React Native and has been moved from React Native source to the community. We have cacheable image, uh, mainly for the image, to, to, to cache the images. React Native storage is also getting more popular. React Native offline and Redux persist. And in Redux Persist is is a compatible uh, mainly it's only compatible with the Redux state when you want to uh, persist some data from uh, uh, from from Redux state itself. 
and then you combine it with the, the storage you combine it with the storage that uh, you, you prefer redux persist can work on uh, in web 2 is not only in react native and it, it will use its local storage in such a case as storage now for the uh, flutter you ha we have the shared preferences preferences which is uh, actually the same if we want to talk about async storage kind of like the same uh which is m the most popular one in the flutter uh pop website and then we have flutter image cache or flutter advanced network image which is uh, mainly for only network images we have a flutter cache manager hive and dio and sql flight uh, is actually also uh, more popular in such a case now in our tutorial or or let's say in our example i'm going to use async storage together with redux persist for react native and then i'm going to use shared preferences uh, only for flutter uh, but you can use whatever you want so for react native we are using uh, as i said before that we are using a couple packages to make it work uh, for example we will use redux persist and in order to integrate Redux persist, we need to use React Redux. Um, then we have Redux tongue, uh, tongue to make the API calls. And we also need Redux toolkit. We have the net info from the community to check the connection, the async storage to integrate the storage to Redux persist. So what I did is actually put everything in the app.js. Uh, you can see the, the UI is not really a big deal. So, so what we have, we have in the root app where we uh, wrap our uh, main component or the first component or the home component, we wrap it with a provider with a persisting state. The provider is coming from React Redux and we pass the store to it. And then uh, persist gate where we pass the persistor uh, here. Now we need to configure the store itself. In order to do that, we need to uh, define our store. So uh, we import configure store from Redux toolkit. We pass the reducer to it where we say uh, which are the reducer. And here is the reducer cannot be only one. It can be actually multiple. So normally if you want to pass a reducer, you will use combine reducers. And then you put, uh, you define all the, your, all your reducers here, for example, to do state, let's say post state or users state, anything. And then you come, you do, you send it directly to uh, the reducer here. Now, but in, in today, uh, oh, with the Redux persist is actually, there is an in, uh, middleware in between, let's say, where we say, uh, use persist reducer. So it's actually we we pass all the reducers to the redux persist and then it will give us back all the reducers with one reducer extra uh, which is uh, which is inter um, let's say integrating all the actions inside um, inside every reducer actions the most important though is that you need to pass the storage so in order to configure it, it has two options. One is for configuration, which is the options and the redu root reducer, which is the combined one. Um, here you pass the root as a key. And this key is very important because it should be unique per reducers. And then uh, in the storage, we pass the async storage. Now the options for React Native is mainly for async storage. I'm not really sure if there are another uh, ones. I think there is another one called MM MMKV storage. And then we have whitelist, which is actually you are whitelisting which state from this. So you could whitelist, for example, a state. You could whitelist a value or property from a state itself. Or you could whitelist all the states. For example, here I have to do state and I want to whitelist it all. So uh, I put this one a whitelist. And if you want to uh, blacklist is also a possible option where you need to pass blacklist and you put the everything. Now, this one is very important because it's uh, it should be matched with what you are writing here. So it's case sensitive. So just make sure that you are passing this very uh, well. Now, uh, we have persist root reducer and we pass this to a configure store in such a case. 
and in the end we need also to make the persistor itself so we are exporting the store and the persistor is using the persist store all uh, where we pass the store itself so this is mainly the configuration one thing though before the api calls that we need to use is put middleware inside the configure store and we pass the redux tank that that will be import imported from the package that we installed Redux tank make it possible to, to, to make a side effect calls, let's say, to the Redux. So it's actually um, whenever you want, uh, it will listen, kind of like it will listen to the actions or uh, yeah, whenever you want to dispatch a specific action and then it will make the call to you and then it will pass it to the reducer. Uh, so maybe let's see this in action. So we have to do reducer. To do reducer is using Redux um, Redux toolkit. We create slice. We call to to dos. We put the initial state, which is in such a case only to dos, and status, which is in such a case idle. So this will have either the array of to do, and then the status will be either idle, pending, succeeded, or fail. And uh, what we do is uh, we this one is mandatory, so you can ignore it. But there is a possible way, another way to pass extra reducers, where you have the builder and you say add case. So whenever the the case that here it will be in action, and this one is here, so that's that's will create an action. We'll come back to this one soon. And this will be either pending, fulfilled, or rejected. So every time you have the ability to check the state, and then you can change the state, whatever you want. Um, you can set it to pending, fulfilled. Uh, there is an action there uh, because the data is already there. It means it succeeded. So you put the payload to the your to dos. And then in case of failed, here you can print the error. You can put more state where you have the error itself. Now, uh, the, the, for the action itself called fetch to do's, it's a, we are using create async tank. This is from Redux toolkit, where we uh, define our key. This is also important, case sensitive, so make, be careful with this. And then we have a function, a callback, where we need to do our call. Um, here we use the fetch itself, we pass the URI, and then uh, we, we just return the response uh, as a JSON. So just make sure that uh, everything is working fine. You could pass some arguments here to the action itself, so whenever it's called, it will pass an argument. So um, yeah. Redux toolkit make it more easier to um, make reducers more than the default one, uh, default way, let's say. Now, this is an action, and what we need to do is when we go to the app.js, um, the first thing is before we printing any data, we need to uh, call uh, the fetch to do. So here we have the app, uh, app component, and then we use dispatch. This is coming from React Redux, and uh, we also use NetInfo. NetInfo has the ability to add event listener. So what we try to do is actually uh, listen to the network state, and if it's connected, then we dispatch the fetch to dos, and if it's not connected, then we just uh, set inner state to that uh, that you are offline. And you will see this in action why uh, put this one here and then we return the subscription because we don't want the the subscription to be uh, i mean running forever and such uh, if we have a so uh, setting for offline is actually main is mainly used to set a message here so here we have a timeout to hide the message after it's shown uh, and here is mainly ui so whenever uh, it's an offline we show a message that you are an offline Otherwise, we have uh, all the view that we have here, which is take to do is show all. And then we have the scroll view, which is actually here where uh, we print all the to do's. And this will so also uh, filter up depends on the state itself. So here we have this one is done. Uh, and here this one is hidden right now. And that's mainly it. So 
we don't have really a fancy thing here online so what i will do is actually make it offline so now we are on offline so uh, we'll just go back open this then we have this message it will say like okay you have uh, you don't have a network data but you still see that uh, the data itself I uh, can also still show all why because all of these data is actually cached right now so that's it for this tutorial we have uh, made caching data uh, here with react native let me know and uh, let me know about your opinion what do you think about this and if you want to see more if you want to see more videos regarding the caching because there are a couple aspects that we can do also regarding the caching and react native itself and in the end don't forget to subscribe and share and thank you for watching and see you next time